Hey guys, Jameson Redding here with Jackson Kayak. And today I wanna to show you kind of how the steering works throughout the Jackson Kayak NAR. We've actually already done an overview video of the steering, but I wanna do a little bit deeper dive, show you how those cables route through the boat and also give you some tips on how to dial those things in so that you can have a better experience out on the water. As we went over in previous videos, the steering on the Jackson NAR makes a continuous loop throughout the boat. It goes all the way from the stern where the rudder is, through the handles on both sides, and makes a loop around the bow. In the stern, you have a few components. You have two pulleys on each side and what we call the rudder disc. The cabling runs through that and kind of dead ends at a couple of screws that allows you to tension the steering system. Here at the handle, it also has a disc or a spool underneath the handle. We'll take a look at that. And then in the front, you have two more pulleys that kind of allow it to make that turn and go around and come down the other side of the boat. So you really want to make sure that everything's kind of routed correctly when you travel, when, when temperatures change, things expand and contract. So things can, you know, get out of alignment or get out of adjustment. So what I like to do is set my boat up when it's kind of the hottest day in the summertime during the day when the sun's on the boat. That way I know the boat is kind of fully expanded and is as big as it's ever gonna get. If I set my steering up to that, as the boat shrinks, I can use the tensioning bungees on the bow and on the stern to take up that slack. So we'll go through how to dial that in and how to make sure everything is kind of set where it needs to be, especially if you're just getting your boat or if you're traveling or you may have knocked things or got things out of whack. When your boat ships to the dealer, the rudder and the rudder pin are actually not attached to the back of the boat here at the rudder disc. So first I wanna take a look at this rudder disc and how the lines should be routed on it. And then you can install your rudder if it's not already installed. It's pretty simple actually. I'm gonna kind of undo it all just in case that is how you receive it from shipping. This thing can get jostled. We do put kind of a, a pad back here or a piece of foam to try to keep it in place. But, you know, in shipping that could come out of place. So essentially you have the rudder disc again with the two screws that hold tension on your lines. So it should look something like this when you open it for the first time with the two tag ends and then the two pieces of line that run through the boat. Those screws should face forward towards the bow. And then you'll notice that you can take this line and there's a slot. And it doesn't matter if you're on the top of the spool or the bottom of the spool with either side. Just pick one for one side and then take the other one and run it on the other side. It'll naturally, one will be on top and one will be on the bottom. So when one's on top, let it have the top spool. When one's on the bottom, let it have the bottom spool. And that's pretty much it. Then just make sure it goes around both the pulley wheels in the back. And it should look something like that. To install your rudder from underneath, insert the rudder into the slot until the holes line up and then install your pin. And that is how the stern of the boat should look with your two tag ends so that you can make those tensioning adjustments. This is my personal boat and I do have it wired up for a battery back here, so ignore all the wiring. But what I wanna show is that your boat has these bungees in the bow and the stern, and this is for tensioning. For right now, I'm gonna leave these off, but when you're ready to install these or you need to install these, they simply hook over the steering line on each side of the boat, like so. And this will help take up the slack as the boat cools off and maybe shrinks some. But again, for now, I'm gonna leave these undone so I can walk through the rest of the steering of the boat. And you see I have some slack in it because it is shady right now and it is a bit cooler than it has been during the hottest part of the days. Here at the bow of the boat where the cordage makes its turn and goes around, you'll notice two screws on either side of your handle. On the bottom side of that, inside the kayak, is where you'll find the two pulleys in the front. They are enclosed, so even if the cable does kind of pop off the pulley, it's still gonna hold its place there, but you do wanna make sure that it's routed on the pulley. And I'll take a look inside the boat here and show you kind of what that looks like. Again here, this is inside the boat. You can see that your pulleys 
kind of run on either side. This is the bottom of those two screws that I pointed out on the bow. And you can see that the cable is ran in that pulley. What can happen if you get too much slack is it can pop off of that pulley either underneath it or on top of it. So I just like to do a spot check usually to make sure that is in there, especially if I've had a big drastic change in weather. But for the most part, that's gonna stay in place. But it's always good to check after you've traveled for a long distance or you've had significant weather changes and you feel like you have slack in your line. So you wanna check that on both sides of the boat and just make sure again that the line is running on that pulley wheel and hasn't popped off. Now I wanna take a look at how the line routes around the spool at the handle. Now this is not something that you should have to deal with that often as the boat should stay routed properly and should be routed properly from the factory. However, it is good to know how that line is ran in case you ever do need to swap out the line or in case you're just troubleshooting some things while you're out on the water. So knowing how that line is ran is very important and I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Now in order to adjust anything at this point or to even check that, you will need a 7 16 wrench and a Phillips head screwdriver. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove this steering handle with that 7 16 wrench. So there's a few components here. Number one, you have the bolt. Carefully remove that and set it aside. You have a washer. There will be two kind of spacers or bushings in here. A small one that's white and a larger, longer black one. The next thing I'm gonna do is remove these two screws on either side of this plate with the Phillips screwdriver. Now, once that is released, you wanna carefully pull this up. And you'll find the nut underneath that holds it all together. And there's actually a space on the bottom that I'll show you that allows that to go in. Once you have this plate removed, you can see that the line comes out of the bow and stern right here. You've got your two inserts and your geometry molded into the boat for this. Again, that nut may be stuck in here, but make sure you don't lose that. That's how everything kind of tightens back up that we've already removed. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. So you understand how the steering works. I'm gonna actually remove this plate, this housing that holds the spool here that your line actually routes through. So it's two more Phillips head screws and set the plate aside. These screws will fall out, so just be careful not to lose them. And now you can actually lift this spool that your line is routed on. Everything's wet because I just washed the boat this morning, but you get an idea here. So on the top looking down, you'll notice that your line runs around the spool. There's a rubber gasket installed underneath this so that when you put the handle on, it kind of pinches this line and holds it in place to keep it from slipping so that when you're turning one handle, the other handle can turn as well. But you'll see that it kind of makes an X. I'm gonna flip it completely upside down so you guys can see. It makes an X. That X will also help keep it from slipping. So essentially, the spool cut goes around at an angle from top to bottom. I'm gonna flip it around again so you guys can see what that looks like. And that way your line will be directed towards the stern and towards the bow. So I'm gonna undo this and just show you guys what it looks like and how to reinstall it if you ever need to. Okay, with the line completely undone, again, here's a look at the spool. The spools are different and they are, the spools are different and should be oriented from right and left if you ever get completely taken apart and you need to remember. You'll have an R on one and an L on the other, plus an arrow that will point towards the bow of the boat in the way it should be oriented. And again, I'm gonna pull this. I like having this small little screwdriver here to show you this. There's a rubber gasket that simply goes on top of the spool right here into that slot. With this completely disassembled, I wanna show you how to reroute it. But the first thing I wanna do is create a little bit of slack in this line. And the easiest way to do that is to go to the stern and simply pull it off one of the pulleys 
and that'll give me enough slack to reroute this without having to mess with the tensioning or anything like that. Now that I've undone the pulley, I can pull this slack through. And the first thing I wanna do is just simply take and make a loop in the line. This will allow it, and I like to turn it looking straight down on it the way I'm looking at it. I turn it clockwise so that the line coming from the stern is on top and the line as it goes out of the loop is on the bottom going towards the bow. Holding your spool with the arrow forward, again remembering there is a right and a left. I'm on the right side of the boat so I have the R. You just simply take the spool and kind of look at how those lines route. Pulling the slack here, you can kind of place those into the slots. I'm holding the slack with this finger so that you can see that is kind of how the line should look. Once you have it here, twist it again so that the line coming off this side is on top. Again, from my perspective, I'm twisting this clockwise so that the line kind of pointing towards the stern is on top and the line going around towards the right or towards the bow here is on the bottom. And that creates that X. And don't worry if things kind of pop out from this perspective, you can always kind of work it back in. But you put both pieces up through this slot here on the side and then put your loop up and over the teeth and then you can kind of pull your slack out. So when you're finished, it should look something like this. You may notice that there's a small Sharpie mark, black mark on your line, and that is where it's set from the factory. That Sharpie line from the factory coincides with being 90 degrees from the point or the arrow and the R on the inside of the boat. So it doesn't matter if you're on the left side or the right side, it's gonna be 90 degrees on the inside from that arrow. The other key thing here is if your other handle is still attached and is still kind of in where it needs to be, you can actually pull tension on the line running towards the bow. And if you watch that other handle won't move really, you wanna set that handle facing directly straight towards the bow and that way when you pull, you know that's the proper amount of tension that you want on the front of the line. So you can kind of pull all your slack towards the back and keep working your line around until you get it to the, where all your slack is pointed towards the back. Hopefully that makes sense. You can see the line just slipped a little bit. You can slip it kind of by holding one and moving it to the front or back. All right, everything is kind of seated right where I want it right now. And we can always make micro adjustments there in a few minutes, but I wanna get this plate back on. So I'm gonna flip this upside down and install this plate again. So you just wanna set it back in the housing, just like this. I don't wanna turn it upside down because my screws will fall out. But I'm gonna take this plate and I'm gonna install it back on. And again, it's easier upside down, I feel like, at least to hold your nuts in place. One finger. And screw this back in place. I'm gonna get the other side, kind of making sure that your line is staying where it needs to be. Once I have that tightened back down, you can look underneath here and just make sure your line looks like it's still running through the spool correctly. And you can turn it upside down and check the other side. But again, it should look something like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this down, but before I install these screws, I'm gonna go back to the back and reinstall the line on that pulley to take up some of that slack. Once you have this spool back in place and you've made sure that your lines are all running correctly, it is time to reinstall 
this to the boat. But don't forget to reinstall this nut into this area right here. At this point, you can reinstall the two screws on either side of the plate. Again, the only reason you should have to take this plate off and do any of the adjusting or reinstalling that I just did is if you have some catastrophic failure, your line breaks and you need to run new lines, or if something really gets a lot of slack in it and pops off. It's just good to know how this line is ran in case you ever need to take this apart and rerun the line. But from an adjustment standpoint, I'll show you guys how to get it from this point right here and completely adjust how your handles are facing and also tension the stern. But as you're reinstalling all of this, the next step after you have these two screws in is to drop the longer spacer in place. I like to put the handle on at this point. Again, lining it up with the arrow that points forward, front of the handle pointing forward with that arrow. Drop the shorter spacer on top here. Washer. And then the bolt. And tighten that down with a 7 16 You don't need to really super tension this. It'll just add extra stress to your steering. It is a lock nut. So you just want enough to where you don't have a lot of slack or play in there. And there you have it. The steering is kind of reinstalled here on this boat. Now that I've kind of went through how the line runs through the boat, how it should look on your rudder disc, and how it should look around and how it routes around the spool at your handle, and how it should look going around the two spools or pulley wheels up front on the boat, I wanna to talk to you about how to properly tension everything and some tips that I've learned along the way. Number one, I like to do this when it's the hottest it's gonna be during that type of time of year. So in the summer, hot day, bright sun, the boat is gonna be as expanded as it's gonna get. Again, it's plastic, it's gonna expand and contract as the weather changes. When it's hot outside and the boat's in full sun, it's gonna be fully expanded. So I like to kind of set my boat up at that moment so that it's as tight as it's ever gonna get. And then I use the bungee system in the stern and in the bow to take up that slack. And that allows me to kind of set it and forget it through the year. Now in the winter, I may have to do some adjustments as I'm not gonna have the heat and the boat is never gonna get as expanded. So I wanna tighten it down a little bit from there. But I wanna show you again, the quickest and easiest way to tension everything and make sure it's right. So the first step with that is I like to take my handles and point them in towards each other. What that's gonna do is take up any slack that I have in the front of the boat. So I grab each handle and I just point them toward each other. And as you can see, I've got a little bit of slack here. I did that on purpose so that I could show you guys how to tension that. So by pulling those handles in, and I don't mean like forcing them in, but gently pulling those handles in, you're gonna take up any slack that you have from the handle forward by having them point each at each other. And then we're gonna go to the stern of the boat and I'll show you how to take up that tension. Right now, we're not worried too much about the handles pointing straight. We can go back and adjust that after we get the tension set on the boat. As we come to the stern of the boat now, and we look at the rudder disc, I wanna make sure that this is pointed straight. So I'm just gonna turn it a little bit so that it's straight on the boat. And that way, I know that the rudder is pointed the direction that it needs to be. And then you can loosen up one of these at a time and pull the slack out. I don't have a ton of slack. I've got a little more on one side than the other. As you can see, this one's actually pretty good. And this one's got some slack to it. It's easy to lift off and on that pulley wheel, but you wanna make sure when you're tensioning it that it is on that pulley wheel. And this one is gonna route around the disc again and come to this screw. So to tighten the left side of the boat or the port side of the boat, I wanna loosen the screw on the other side, on the right side of the boat. Now I had actually went in and kind of reversed. Normally this line will come in and it will wrap around this screw on this side going counterclockwise and on the other side clockwise. But because I didn't want it to loosen as I tightened the screw, I actually took it off and routed it the other direction, which is why you see mine coming out here instead of right here. That's just a little simple trick that I learned as I tighten the screw down, it keeps this from like pushing the line away from itself and makes the line kind of tighten on itself. But once you've got that loosened up where you want it, 
You don't have to take this all the way off. In fact, you don't want to because then the nut on the back side can fall off. I'm just gonna hold this straight and just pull with my hand the line. You don't want it over tightened. So I'm gonna pull with my hand and just get that line to where I want it. Check my tension, it feels about right. Again, you just want it to where it's not easy to lift off of this pulley back here. So when I get it where I want it, I'm gonna take my screwdriver and tighten this back down. And the way I have it routed, it will actually give it a little bit of tightening as I tighten this screw. That should pinch the line. You want it nice and tight so the line's pinched. And now I've got that one nice and tight and that one's nice and tight. And again, I want to kind of make sure this is pointed straight as I can get it. And there you have it. So it was really easy to do that. If you need to do it to the other side, you can. Again, don't worry too much about the length of these being the same or anything like that right now. You just want the tension on both sides to be the same. So when I pulled the handles in initially to take the slack up from the front, that gave me the slack in the back and I was able to take all that slack out. But now you may end up with a situation like this where your handles are both pointed in. But before I do anything else, what I wanna do is kind of cycle the steering a little bit just to kind of make sure the line is settled throughout the system. So I'm gonna turn it a couple of times from both sides. And then go back to center. Now, again, my handles are probably off. So to go back to center, I'm gonna look while I have the hatch open in the back and make sure my rudder is pointing relatively straight uh, with the boat, which looks like what I have now is the handle on the right hand side is actually pretty much where I want it now that I've cycled it a few times, but the handle on the left hand side is off. So we'll go over how to adjust that right now. Making sure that the rudder is straight again, the handle on the right hand side of my boat as I face forward or the starboard side was exactly where I wanted it. But the handle on the left hand side is off. Typically they both would be off, but because I've been adjusting and moving things around to show you guys, I ended up with a situation where just the right handle is facing inward. So in order to have the maximum amount of turning radius on both sides, I want both my handles to be facing forward and as straight as possible. Again, I'm gonna remind you, I like to tension this boat kind of at the warmest day that I'm expecting this summer. So I went out on a hot day where it was direct sun and I tensioned my boat. I'm adjusting that now because it is kind of moving into cooler days here as we approach fall. But the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take that 7 16 wrench and remove this top handle. Remember, you've got a few pieces to keep up with here. So you wanna pull that bolt out, lay it aside, pull that washer. Then I have the small white spacer. And then I'm gonna lift the handle and I have the larger black spacer. I'm gonna lay the handle aside. As you can see here, my arrow is pointing inward. Now you can't just move the handle around to where it's straight because you will lose some throw. There is actually a stop in here to keep you from oversteering. So if you don't have this arrow actually pointed towards this front screw or towards the bow, you will not have the full swing when it comes to the steering. So this is a pretty simple fix actually. Remember we have the rubber gasket and everything is routed around. So what I like to do is just take a small flathead screwdriver and being careful not to damage this line. I'm gonna lift the line up a little bit on the inside here. Again, it's wet. I washed the boat this morning. So I'm just gonna lift the line slightly and then kind of set it back into place. I put my handle back on and while holding the other handle, I'm gonna twist. By doing that, I got it to slip. Now I'm not seating the handle all the way into this line because if I do that, it's gonna pinch and then it won't allow it to twist around. But by creating a little bit of slack here with my screwdriver and then just barely seating the handle on top, I was able to twist that and get that slack around. So again, I'm just barely seating this handle. I'm not pushing down on it. I'm not putting any pressure on it. I don't have the screw on it. I'm holding my other handle where I want it and I'm just gonna kind of slowly push and put a little pressure on it and get that twisted to where I want. 
Now I can look across, see that my other handle is pointed the right direction, and now I can see that this handle is also gonna be pointed the right direction because I have my arrow pointed towards this front screw or towards the bow. And that is simply it. I'm gonna reinstall everything. I like to put the black spacer in first, drop the handle on, lined up with that front arrow, drop in the white spacer, then put the washer on and reinstall the bolt. Again, you do not need to over tighten this. You just want it snug so there's not a lot of play in the handle. So I kind of hand tighten it. And just when it starts to get a little bit tight there, I put a little bit of pressure on it and that's it. You don't want it to over tighten because it won't spin easily your bolt's actually not spinning, just the handle. So if it's too tight and pinches this, it'll bind. So I'm actually gonna back it off just a little so it's a little easier to turn. And there you have it. My steering is in line with each side. When this one's pointed straight, that one's pointed straight. And I'm gonna just check the stern now to make sure that the rudder is straight when the handles are straight. And that's it. If it feels a little bit tight to you, it's not a big deal. You can go to the stern and actually just loosen those screws up and put a little bit of slack in the line. It may allow your handles to point outwardly slightly, but you can do what I just did and adjust one handle at a time and get them where you want them. So there you have the steering for the Jackson Kayak NAR. For more information, including where to find a dealer, be sure to check out jacksonkayak.com.